Hello, this is Christian. So in this video, we're going to look at sessions in Node.js. Now, before we do that, I want to go ahead and just show you a little bit about the meaning of sessions and why they are so important in web applications. So imagine you have a website that looks like this. You have some content that are probably available to anyone, but you have some other content that you want to restrict users from accessing this information, right? So usually, like, maybe it has something like this. So this first... Uh, image here, you see that um, the public page is available, but you have three sites or pages that are not available. And if you don't have any way of allowing users to get in, there's no login or no access information, you can't really log in, right? So this is really kind of useless for your user. And another idea you can have is that every page that you have, you can allow the user to you know, be authenticated and then they can view the information. But if you go to another page on the same site, you have to keep logging in again and again. And you know this will work, and it'll you know uh, annoy the um, heck out of your users, and they'll just leave you. But uh, ideally, the idea is just that when you have a series of information or data that are private, but you want to give this to your you know registered users, then the solution is to really create what's called a session. So that will look like this in the first picture I showed you here. So that once they logged in, then you know all these pages can be accessible as long as the user is um, active and signed in. Okay, so that is the idea behind sessions. Now, session is not new. It's a um, something that's been you know done for a long, long time. And if you are um, if you have a background in PHP, then you probably use that quite a lot in PHP and it's very easy to use in PHP. But in Node.js, you have to install some kind of module. So before we begin, I wanna just give a little bit background on my application here. I basically made a copy of my module two, which is a very simple site. Uh, the site I have like a couple pages and I made that into a sessions PG. The PG here is because I want to add um, uh, a PostgreSQL to have some kind of permanent data store, okay? So for now, let's see what this file, uh, this app looks like. So let me go ahead and run this in the terminal so we can see what it looks like. And I'm gonna launch at port 8080, so that's good. So here is the site, I've seen this, you've probably seen this before. I have four pages here, you know, and they're all accessible, okay? So let's say that, you know, I want to restrict these three pages, the about, contact, and portfolio. So only a user who is signed in or registered can view them. Otherwise, they will be only seeing the homepage. And maybe if they try to click any one of these pages over here, it will direct them to a login or registration page, right? So um, let's see how this is done. Well, first of all, uh, we need to install some uh, uh, libraries. So I'll keep this running as is, it's fine. I'm gonna open another terminal over here and we're gonna install um, a package called express-session and another, another one called cookie-parser, okay? These are the two uh, modules that you need to retain state and, and, and Node.js. Okay, so that's done. I basically can close that now. So here is what you can do um, in Node.js. In the app or an express framework, there is a property called locals. Let me show you, we like go right into the routes are. So if I do something like this, app.locals, and this locals property, I can attach any property of my choice. Let's say I'm gonna attach a variable called login and I'm gonna set that to true, okay? So this is very similar to sessions in PHP again. So this locals login, the way I'm doing here because I'm using the express handlebars. So my templates over here, as you can see, if I go to the home page, right? It's, it's a handlebar, so I have to, uh, find a way to pass data from my source out to the view, right? The view here is it's public facing, but at the same time, uh, it's managed by view, I mean, Node.js, okay? So what I'm showing you here is that once I create a variable called um, login or property called login to the locals app property here in the app, I can access this variable uh, directly in the template. So if I go to the main HT, HBS, this is the homepage, I can, you know, like hide these sections. So from here to 
I can just do something like this. I'll say, if the login is true, that, that's what that means, then show the content. Right? If it's not true, then turn it off. Okay, so if I save that and then go back to the page, um, all right, so here we go. If I go and refresh the page, you see that everything, you know, you can see here, uh, that's fine. Let me go and make it a little bit smaller. It's easier for us to see. Okay, so you can see that that is visible. Now, if I go ahead and uh, turn this to be false, right, that's now false. And if I refresh the page, you see that the content is now gone, right? So of course you can't see in the view. If you see the view, there's nothing shown. Just you just see that header, and then that's it. Okay. So that is the idea behind using sessions. But imagine if I go here and you know I have to check that every time. But how do you know to turn this on and off? That is the key, and that is by using session. Okay. So we'll keep that on for now, and I'm gonna you know remove this. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So that means when I uh, go to the, let me expand this here, go to the header. Uh, yeah, I'll keep that as for now. And I'm sorry, yeah, the index page, okay. So when I log in here, okay, at first I want to create a session. So first let's import the sessions up here. So I'm gonna right above here. Um, we'll call this just a session. Uh, express session right here. I need that. I also want to get the uh, mistype session here, by the way. Let's fix that first. Uh, the cookie parser is the same name. This is for to writing, write and read and the cookies uh, for the, from the back end to the front end. Okay, so those two are there. And then right down here, after I set the, um, this, uh, again, this would be your middleware. I usually Put a note here saying these are your middleware. Okay, middleware are uh, the one that has the use attribute. Okay, so I have another one here. Now use the uh, cookie parser. Let's invoke that so it will be in, in, uh, injected into the program. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to create. Um, I'll keep that there. It's fine. I'm going to create a session over here. Uh, sessions. So you're gonna. Again, another, um, let me put this down here. Okay, this is still part of the middleware, okay? So add that use, and then here's session. It's a function that takes an object, okay? So this object has about uh, three or four, probably four key elements that you need to put. The first one is the key. The key here makes your session unique, and this is just a, key of your choice. Sometimes people call it login, sometimes people call it user, and I'll call my user ID or SID for user session ID, okay? So that is the key that you need to access when you create the cookie and destroy your cookies. If you need a secret key, the secret key is used for hashing purposes. So it's a secret message of this is my secret. It's just a series of text or strings. You make it as long as possible to make it really hard to, uh, you know, hash your key, okay, for um, prevention of session hijacking stuff and also prevent uh, other session from writing. And then the next thing is called the resave attribute. This is usually set to false, okay, and because you don't want to resave your session every time and, and doing so can have some, um, some problems. Um, the other one is called the save uh, initialized. This one here also set to false because if you don't set to false, then every time we load a page, it will recreate a new session every time and that can consume a lot of RAM. So you don't want to do that here. You do that in probably in very, very rare cases. And then finally, you want to set a cookie um, attribute here. The cookie takes an object and one of the objects um, probably you use is the expires and you basically give it in milliseconds how long Suki will like, persist in the uh, user's uh, machine, okay? Not on the server side, I think it's on, a, on the client side machine. So give it any number you want, milliseconds, let's say, you know, like 6,000, whatever. Is that 60,000, uh, 600, that's like a week or so. Any number you want, basically, I'll leave it at that, okay? So that is basically the session, you create that into that cookie, the program. 
Okay, so now uh, when you access the log, this is the home page. These two are the home pages, right? And then here is the about page, contact, and the portfolio. So these three will be the ones that I want to restrict those. Now, when you create a GET API like this, usually we have like the first one here is the URL pattern, and then immediately follows by the request uh, call by function to render the content. Of course, you can add, I, as far as I know, as many um, functions in here if you want, call by functions, if you know how to do them, okay? So what I'm saying is, when you get to the about page, okay, you want to restrict this before you render this to the user, okay? So what you do is right in between here, you can add another one that looks like this. Request, response, and then we have a next, okay? Next here means to load the next, um, the next middleware. So it's a middleware function. So this is a callback function, but it is a middleware function that can call the next one here and you can add many more, okay? So what that means is if, if this function does not resolve in here, right? That's not end here. You can pass the, um, you know, the process to the next function over here, okay? So in here, then what you can do is um, you can check to see the state of your session. Right. So if the session is active, then that means that the user is logged in. If it's not active, then you want to force the user to go to a, um, a login page. OK, so what I'm doing is, is so I would say if the request session now again, request session. Now it's built into the session because we imported and we added to the program session. You can add any uh, property of your choice. Let's say I'm going to call a user. Okay, if the user is not is is true, right? If the request session is active, and the and the request that cookies of the user ID SID that is so this key here is the key I created up here. Okay, if this session ID is active and the cookie is active. That means that your user is active. If that is the case, then go ahead and send the user to the next callback, right? The next middleware, which next do you want next to it, which is this guy right here. And then what it's gonna do, it's going to render the about page, okay? If it's not true, if this is if both of these, if one of these is not true, then we go to the else clause. And what we're gonna do, we're going to redirect, so rest response, redirect the user back to a login page. All right, so that is where it ends, right? Either go to the next callback if the user is logged in or send it off to the next page with the user login page. Okay, so in my example, I'll recreate a login page, has a, um, a username and a password, okay? And then when they log in, then of course, you're going to create uh, over here a login route first, which I don't have, <laughs> okay? So let's create a login page. Um, I'm gonna color right, right above here. Something reasonable, we're gonna do that. And we'll put here, this is the login. So it'll be login. And then we have the login. Page. Okay, so the login page over here, when we submit the login, we're going to send it off to the login URL again, but via a post. So now I need to create another one here for the post to the login. So this is, I should put here post, then login. Okay, this is the get only, right? Just showing the form only. So this would be a post. I'm going to go to this URL. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do very something very simple. All I'm doing is basically set these two variables here, okay? So I'll put like a request.session.user is going to be a user, I'll call it username, and then it's called me. Okay, I set that to that property and also set the cookie. Um, uh, you know, I don't actually, I don't have to set a cookie. I, all, all I'm doing is once you set this, the cookie is set. 
Okay, so I'm going to do that. And also, I want to turn on this variable here, right? Remember, this is set to initially, let's, let's set to false, okay? You don't want to allow a user to log in or get access to those pages. So this would be false. But once they log in, they want to set the username to that username. And they will also want to set the um, login to true as well. And then we're going to re not render, we're going to redirect them, OK? It's a redirect. It's different from a render. We're going to direct them to the home page, basically, because now they are logged in, right? <laughs> OK? So let me see if this thing works, okay? Let's see if this thing runs. Now, first I wanna do is go to the header page. So here is the log of the links. So again, um, if I go back to the page, if you can see if I go to about, you can see you know, it's, it's already directing me to the login page. And this is the only one that I worked on. So the contact doesn't work yet because I did not restrict those, but surely about, you can't see it until you log in. Okay, so if I go and log in just any gibberish, it doesn't really matter because I did not verify those. If I click submit, you're gonna see that it asked me to, you know, that just saying that I'm, I'm logged in, it should be. So I should be able to see the about page now. Okay, so you can see that it's now good, right? Because I'm logged in. That is the key here. But I wanna uh, um, restrict these two as well. So now, how do we log out? there must also be a way to log out the user. So ideally you're gonna have a button over here uh, to log in, register, and also log out. So when the user is not logged in, we want to um, restrict this or maybe, uh, yeah, either that, or maybe you can hide, hide all of these here and show a login and registration button. Once they are logged in, then you can see these four buttons here plus a log out, right? So the design is entirely up to you, okay? So that is uh, working already. So you know, I'm gonna create another one here called the log out. So I'm gonna copy this right here. This is the log out, uh, just a get. Okay, so this is back to the get. When they click on the URL log out, then we're basically gonna destroy this session here. You, you destroy that by, you can set it to empty if you want. You don't have to, I could, I could do this, right? Um, to like a null, you wanna do that, that's optional. But ideally you wanna just set the cookies to, um, you want to basically uh, clear the cookies. So you can do the rest dot um, clear, it's a clear cookie right here. And what is the cookie ID? It's called user underscore SID, okay? You clear that cookie, then basically this is also destroyed. So really it's kind of redundant. I don't really need that. And then once I do that, I want to set this login pack back to false and then redirect the user back to the homepage or wherever you want to direct it to, okay? All right, so that is the log out. So, I mean, let's save and see if this is still active. So we go over here. Again, I'm still logged in. I, oh, actually, I'm logged out already because it's reset. Okay, so I can't see the about page. If I do something here, log in, boom, I should be able to see the about page here. If I log out, I'm gonna go to the URL and just type log out. And it should log me out already. I should not be able to access the about page. As you can see, it's back to that was again. But it's kind of hard to indicate you know, whether you log in or not, right? So using this idea, I'm gonna go into the header HBS over here and add some of the links. So I'm gonna add one, two. This is for the um, login. This is the uh, register. And we'll do one more for the logout. Okay. So this is logout, this is register, and this is the login. Right, so I want to separate this. I'm just saying that if the user is log is not logged in, I want to hide this three, show the login and register. So these two actually going to go up here. Uh, yeah, okay. Show show these three. Once they are logged in, then I want to show the other three. Yeah, show this four, right? So you basically, you separate this group. This is public, right? This is public page. But 
<laughs> excuse me, if right here, so I can put here, if login, um, I want to do that with it around. If login, then show these instead. Else, show these and then we'll end it right here. Okay, so that is the logic. And you can do this a little bit nicer. So if it's true, then show this, else show the other ones. And then let's see if this true. Let's save this, go to our page, and here we go. Refresh the page, and here we are. So you can see that we are not logged in, so I don't see the other pages anymore. I can register again. I don't have that yet, which I think I should have. Yeah, I don't have the, um, the route yet. But you can see I can log in. So again, just something here, and then we, we log in. And boom, you can see that now the other pages show up, and these have no restriction now because I'm logged in, right? And then now I can log out. Once I log out, then the other links are gone and back to where it was before. So basically that is the idea behind sessions, okay? So um, that is good. I will leave that as is. And then the uh, index page, I have a um, login, log out. I need a registration. So let's just add another one over here. It'll be just one of these guys and uh, put it right here is fine. This is for the register, okay? We're gonna load the register page. <laughs> and likewise, you're gonna have another one for the register using the post, right? So this is the post when the user register, um, they're gonna send the data back to the register. And then here, you're gonna do something like the, um, the post up here, okay? Uh, but for now, we're going to just um, um, leave that for now. Um, let's see. I'm going to redirect the user back to the home page once they are registered. We'll do, yeah, you have to do some you know, registration in here, right? Okay. And so now, as you can see that, um, if I do this every time, if I happen to like, not using this logic that all these links will be available, right? And then sometimes people can actually access these pages directly. What I mean is, is this. So let's say if, if I'm not logged in, if I know the URL to the uh, to the um, contact page, you can see that it actually takes me to the contact page, right? It, I'm kind of faking this because I know the page goes here. So you also want to restrict these pages as well, uh, in addition to the, um, navigation link because you can go behind it. Same thing to the portfolio, right? Because that is also available, even though I don't have in the link, you know, it's actually accessible because I can sneak around it, right? Except for the for the uh, contact because we um, kind of, I mean, the about page, we kind of we already restrict that page. So that is what you want to do for every page in here. Okay, so basically um, you want to copy this and add it to every one of the like, um, the contact and the portfolio page. But, you know, instead of doing that way, then you want to move this out to a function, right? So we can call a function up here. Um, yeah, we put up here. Okay, we can do something like this. Um, use error function is okay. I use error function, I can say um, is, is active or some, uh, what will we call it? Maybe is session active, okay? and then use the error function. And then we check that here. If it's not, then, you know, we're not. Okay, that is that is it for that one, right? So we can use this function in its place down here. When the user goes to the about page, we place this is section active. If it's true, if it's active, then load this, otherwise go to the login. Then the contact is same thing, right? It's, we check this session active or not, same thing down here. So any place, any link that you want to check this session, you add that function here, okay? So I think that's uh, the only ones. These, I can ignore this for now, all right? So now, if this is working, if I go back, now, so you can see that I go to the about page, it directs me to the login. If I go to the contact page, it directs me to the login. 
and the portfolio should also direct me to the login um, if I type it correctly. Okay, so now it's restricted until I basically log in, then they're back on. How do we know it's working or not? You can click on it, boom, right? You can see, I can see the content because I already logged in, so it shows the data, okay? Uh, otherwise, it would, not, it would not let me see this information. Okay, so I hope this uh, clarifies what we just done here, okay? So basically, you create a session, uh, create a function to check the state of your sessions. Basically, the user, uh, a, a user um, property and the cookies of the user ID that you create. The user ID here is this name right here. Whatever you call it, you pass it right here. Okay? It attaches to the cookies object. If both of these are true, then the user is indeed logged in, then you go to the next callback, okay, or the next uh, middleware. Otherwise, you keep redirecting the user to the login page. You force them to log in, okay? Um, and then you create a variable called login. I mean, a property called login to the app locals. So you can check the state of that and you can show it high information on the browser and, and the view. Okay, and then down here is basically you do the, um, you know, uh, uh, function stuff, right? We log in, um, you set the username to that. Of course, this is a very simple one. You have to actually direct check this from the database and we do that in the next video. Um, so you authenticate the user uh, from the database and then with that is true, then you go ahead and set these two variables and redirect to the, uh, um, you know, uh, homepage. Otherwise, you keep redirecting to the login page until they actually um, authenticate themselves. Logout is exactly as this here. Uh, I think there's not much we can do here. It, this is pretty good already. Um, we'll see what we can do a little bit later. Um, this is uh, all done. The other ones that we need to do is the registration here. So this is pretty straightforward. It just load the render, re register page. Once we submit the data here, then we need to save the information to the uh, um, database. And then, so we can use this data back to log in. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. And in the next video, we're going to perform this same operation, but we're gonna save the data to a PostgreSQL database system. Any questions, please let me know. Thank you.